Hello and welcome to this youth channel special. I am Daquan Herring and I will be guiding this show discussion on church and the youth. I am a Christian, but God is still patiently working on me. <laughs> and as a work in progress, I don't go to church as often as I should, mainly due to time constraints. When I do attend church, sadly, there are only a few who are in my age group. When I talk to my peers about faith and religion, many of them have questions and concerns. They don't feel comfortable acting in fear of being judged. So we want this show to be an outlet for them. Here with me to provide some non-judgmental guidance is Dominique Bryant. <laughs> Dominique has a master's degree in theology and currently serves as an elder and minister in her church, Victorious Triumphant Word International Church in Brooklyn, New York. As a native of Brooklyn, Dominique is known to the Fort Greene community as a strong advocate on quality issues such as public housing, public safety, and youth and family services. Thank you so much for taking this time out to join me. Before we get into some questions and concerns, youth have, let's get your take on some issues surrounding the church and youth. What would you say is the relationship between young people and the church? The relationship between young people and the church. Um, I guess there's a two-part answer to that uh, because you do have a number of young people who are very involved in, uh, in church, yeah. in the church life, um, especially those who are sort of grown up in church and they were, you know, raised from, you know, from a baby until you know, their older youth life. Yeah. And then you have the second part to that, you have a lot of young people who feel very disconnected from the church. Um, even those young people who were grown, you know, who has grown up in the church and once they get to a certain age, they begin to sort of feel disconnected. Yeah. And not as, um, uh, they don't really feel apart. They don't feel like they belong. And why do you think that? Why do you think the people, the young people who have grown up in a church started feeling a disconnection? Hmm. Okay, so you're trying to get deep. So <laughs> Let's get deep. Um, let's see. I, I think I can answer that three ways, and I'll do it really quickly. All right. Um, one of the reasons, from my observation, is I believe a lot of young people do not, they don't have a... Those who have become disconnected, they don't really have a relationship yes. with God. I think that oftentimes, especially growing up Christian, when you look at Christianity and you look at church, you look at it as a religion and not a lifestyle. Yeah. It's not a love relationship between you and God. So it becomes very, very traditional, very religious, yeah. you know, and one of the things that we know, you know, with young people is if you don't feel connected, if you're not connected to something, especially with your heart, you know, it's very easy for you to become disconnected. Yeah. So if you don't have a real love, a real relationship, like, you know, me and you can have a relationship. If there's no real relationship, you know, with God, it's very easy for you to be disconnected. Um, the second, um, the second point I would believe is you know, there's a lot of judgment in church. There's, 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 there's a lot. And how, you know, yeah. how can I say that? You know, I'm <laughs> youth leader, youth minister, you know, I'm born and raised, you know, in church. Um, so I've seen a lot. I've seen a lot of, you know, of the older generation judging a lot of our younger yeah. generation. We're definitely going to be talking about that throughout so this you want whole me to, special. You want me to hold, you want me to hold that piece? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so I think that yeah, those sort of those two and um, and I would say just the third one is that you know most young people they go through a very rebellious age, so yeah. something that they know that you know that their parents would love for them to do, you know all young people I've I've gone through it you sort of rebel yeah. I don't want to do what my parents you know think that I should do. There's always talk of needing more after school programs to keep young people out of the streets. But in the community, there isn't a lack of churches. So what are the churches doing or should be doing to keep the young people in? 
So I, I think it's very, it's it's a very good point that you've, you know, that you've raised, that the the community is running over with churches. Yes. You know, you walk down some streets in, in certain communities, you have three or four churches that are literally lined up one by one next to each other. One of the things that I think that the the church is not doing, and I'm, um, when I say that I can't speak on individual churches, I'm talking about the the church as a as a whole. Yeah. I think that we have not tapped in and really figured out what do we need to do for this generation and how can we tap into this generation and what are the needs of this generation. So with every generation you have different needs. Yes. You know, you have um, different struggles. You know, what your generation may, you know, be struggling with, I didn't have to struggle with. And, you know, the generation of my parents or my grandmother may not have had to struggle with those those specific struggles. So we have to sort of like move in with the ages and move in with the times and figure out what is it that what what is it that this generation needs? And then once you identify that, then you begin to cultivate programming out of that. Yeah, right. What are some things your church is doing to attract the young people and to keep them? So one one of the things, because we don't have a lot of, I don't have a lot of youth right now. Yeah. The youth that I was, um, I once um, worked with, they've sort of aged into young adulthood yeah. right now. And then I have a lot of younger, a lot of younger ones. But one of the things that I, um, that I did do is again, like I said, identify what the need is. And once you begin to identify what the need is, a lot of our young people in Victorious, they had this, you know, I want to be a leader. Yeah. You know, um, in, in different aspects of life. So what I did was I cultivated cultivated that leadership. All right. You know. Um, so you just have to identify what the needs are. And then you also have to make it very fun. If you do not, if young people do not enjoy this thing called Christianity, um, this 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 lifestyle because I don't call it a religion. It's not a religion religion for me. Sure. It's a lifestyle. It's it's what I breathe. I you know I eat. I move. I think everything is um, that is my lifestyle. But you have to be able to enjoy it. If it becomes a chore, if it becomes something that you're just doing because you're told to do it, yeah. um, you're attending church just because you're told to attend church. You're not gonna really you know. You're, you're going to sort of like rebel against that a little bit. So, you know, in the churches, we have to sort of double side. You have to identify what is that recreational need that we have to give to the youth. And then what is that um, what, what is that struggle that they're struggling with? And how can we build programming around that? That's a very good answer. <laughs> In preparation for this show, I had some young people provide me with questions and statements that they have regarding faith and the church. I will read each one of them, and I would love for you to have a wonderful response to it. Okay, I'll try my best. <laughs> the first one I have, one of the reasons, like you said earlier, young people leave the church is because they feel judged. Mm -hmm. And earlier you started to give me a wonderful response, and I wanted you to save it just for this part. Okay, I hope I can remember. <laughs> <laughs> so why do you feel um, that young people is leaving? Why, why are the churches are judging young people first and I, foremost? I think because the older generation is very fearful of sharing with the younger generation where they have been. So the word of God, you know, says that there's nothing new under the sun. Yeah. Okay? So... A lot of struggles that young people are struggling with now, even though the struggle may be shaped in a different form, it's not really new, okay? So that, that same young person, that same young woman, that 15-year-old that may have, you know, made that very mistake and they went out and they got pregnant, yeah. right? Um, as opposed to an older, an elder person in the church, taking that young lady under the wing and saying, baby, I went through the same thing. When I was 15 years old, I made that mistake. The sin was the act, but the yeah. baby is not, you know? And then taking that younger person and sort of um, nurturing them and cultivating them and making them feel, you know, a way as in 
you know, you don't have to run away. You don't have to run away from, you know, your problem. So yeah. I think that, that that's one of my things, you know, with, um, you know, with, with young people and why we have so many who are straying away that when they make a mistake, you know, there's no one of the elder generation that's coming and saying, well, listen, I've made that same mistake. When I was 14, yeah. I went out and I robbed something. You know, I robbed a store and, you know, I was, I was put in jail, you know, but I don't need you to stay there. I need you to, you know, to, to, um, uh, what is what is what is sort of the word? I need you to you know become reformed and yeah. you know to like learn from grow, the mistake. Right, learn right, learn from your mistake and know that that's not a mistake that they have to do again. All right. What advice do you have for these young people who are struggling with their faith? My my only advice to youth, young people, young adults, adults, older people. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, who are struggling with their faith is. They just have to seek God, you know, and realize that this lifestyle, I think that that's really a key, that it's not so much religion, but it becomes a lifestyle. Because when it becomes a lifestyle, then you begin to have a heart and heart, a heart to heart relationship with God. And you begin to know God for yourself. Yeah. So it's not anyone else really you know, um, dictating to you what your relationship should be with God, but it is you really knowing and, and, and experiencing a, a relationship between you and your father. Yes. You know, so I think that once, you know, once a, young people can begin to sort of get back to the drawing board and, um, uh, there, there's an old saying about, um, you know, getting back to your first love, you know, um, there's a, in the song that a lot of young people, you know, was raised up singing is yes, Jesus loves me and begin to realize that yes, Jesus loves you and, um, receiving that love and then being able to reciprocate that love back to the Lord, you know, and then that's where relationship will begin. And once that relationship sort of forms there, then it be can begin to cultivate and then you become interested in other things in the ministry. Because I love God and because I have a gift to sing, I want to go and sing on a choir. Yeah. Because I love God and I love people, I want to be a part of the hospitality ministry. Because I love God and I believe that I have a gift of cooking, maybe I need to be a part of the cooking ministry. So that's where I believe that a lot of interest sort of will begin to, to grow from, but you have to begin to have that relationship first between you and your father. I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, at what age did you realize that Christianity was your lifestyle and not just your religion? So because I was raised in church, um, I had a very, I experienced some rebellious times. Um, I believe in about 11th grade. I mean, not really bad stuff, but it was rebellious. Yeah. You know? um, but I believe coming, coming out of high school, I was going through some things and just realizing that, you know, the only way that I was going to be able to come out, make it out, survive out of what it was that I was going through. And we don't realize a lot of our young people are going through some real tough situation that's very much true you know some real tough stuff so when I realized that the only there was there was no other help that could have really given me the comfort the the safety net that I needed was God going back to my first love and it was at that it was at really at that point where I realized that hey Dominique you got to shape it up get it together you know if this is this is what I'm going to for Christ I live, for Christ I die. This is the lifestyle that I'm going to, you know, live for the rest of, you know, my life. And I enjoy it. You know, I enjoy myself. I enjoy myself as a Christian. You know, I go out, I have a good time. It's not, a lot of people think that Christianity is a very stuffy, you know, in the house, um, you know, everything covered, no yeah. earrings, because that's, that's the, that's where I come from, very old school Pentecostal, yeah. you know, um, so a lot of people think that when they hear the word Christianity, that's what they revert to, you know, um, but I enjoy this thing. <laughs> what do you feel is some of the advantages of being a Christian? 
So if you want to go, want to go biblical, <laughs> if you want to, that's, you know, um, some of the advantages of being a Christian, um, again, if you want to, if, if you want to be biblical, if you are a born again believer yeah being a born again believer certifies you okay that um when this here life is over you will live again right yeah um that that is that is the 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 overall that that's the overall you know picture um sort of for that but as a christian i live in a life of liberty I live with the security that I know that I have somebody that has my back, that it may not be someone physical, you know, in the natural, yeah. but there is, there, there is somebody upstairs, you know, somebody around me, someone who is everlasting and omnipresent that constantly has my back, that I'm never alone, you know, that any struggle um, or anything that I go, that I go through I have someone that I can go and pray to. I have someone that I can, I can, you know, meditate to. Um, and then you have this sort of built-in family. I naturally come from a very large natural family. Yeah. But when you are a Christian and when you are a born-again believer, that means that every other born-again believer is now, we're now family. You are my brother in Christ. You are my sister in Christ. How is the church responding or addressing the growing number of youth who are lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender? So I think that that you you have a lot of um, you have a lot of responses. Yeah. To that, you have a lot of responses. You have some churches who are very receptive, right? You have some churches who um, who are not as you know as not as receptive to it. Then you have some churches who are just like downright, no, that's not what we are. That's not what we're about. Um, and that's not what we are, um, where we're accepting here. Yeah. So that sort of response throughout the church is very much so all over the place. But one of the things that I tell people all the time that Christ is love, right? Yeah. And the center of Christ is love. And Jesus is love love. So regardless of what everybody's response is, we all come back to the center love. So with that being said, a lot of churches don't show that love. Mm -hmm. How, what do you think? Like, how do you feel about that? <laughs> um, I mean, I think it's a problem. It's a problem because if I'm supposed to represent, you know, someone of love, that means that in all of my interaction with anybody and through any situation, it should represent love. Yeah. You know, in, in regardless into what, whether you, you know, live a lifestyle that someone is not in agreement to, whether you went and had a baby out of wedlock, you know, whether you are a gangbanger, whether you sell drugs or whatever, I'm still supposed to be able to show that love that Christ showed me. Yeah. You know, um, because every day Christ show me love because I'm not deservant, you know, of the grace and the mercy that, I mean, some of, some of the thoughts that I have, it's like, whoo, <laughs> Dominique, you know, you know, some of, some of the actions that, you know, that I have. So if Christ can show me the love that he shows me, I'm supposed to be able to show that same love to everybody, regardless of what your situation is. That's true. As stated during the introduction, mm -hmm. God is still working on me. He working he's on patient, me. He's patiently working on me. Mm -hmm. And you're doing such a good job. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not, over, I'm not all the way there mm -hmm. where probably I should be with my religion mm -hmm. and faith. Because just like you, I was born in the church. And I'm one of the youth who happened to distance myself mm -hmm. and don't go as much as I should. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give me or teens who are like me and they want that relationship, but they are faced with the daily challenges of... So the advice that I would give you is one, continue to allow him to work on you, right? Yeah. Because the moment you prick against the working, you know, then you have to start all over again. 
All right. So I think that that's a key that I, I think that's amazing that you're saying that you may not be where you want to be, but you're not where you used to be. Right. Yeah. Because you're in a place now where you can truly say that God is still working on me. So my advice to you is continue to let him work because guess what? Believe it or not, as an elder in the church, I go and preach at churches all over. Right. Yeah. Um, I serve in my local, in my local church, masters in theology. And guess what? God is still working on me. The day that I am a completed work is the day that I take my last breath. And I think that a lot of times people don't, and young people don't realize that, is that we're all a work in progress. There's nothing perfect in me. Yeah. There's nothing perfect in you. There's nothing perfect in anybody. The only, the only bit of perfection that we have is when we accept Jesus Christ in our life to be our personal Lord and Savior. That's the only bit of perfection that we have. So my only advice is, is to continue to let him work. <laughs> You know, and as you as 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 you begin to, you know, get a little bit more serious, you know, um, and you begin to let your love for God cultivate and yeah. grow stronger, then there's going to be certain desires that you're going to want to. Um, th there's going to be different desires now. There's going to be like, OK, my love is really growing strong. Now yeah. I need to hear the word of God. Now I need to hear a little bit more about him. So I need to. You know, I maybe can't go to church every Sunday, yeah. but maybe I'll try to go once a month, you know, and then maybe it'll become stronger and stronger, you know, as time goes by. That's true. Well, Miss Dominique Bryant, thank you for your time today. You're so welcome. Thank, thank you for you having for, me. Oh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. You're Look welcome. forward to continuing this conversation with you. Um, maybe next time we should have some youth join us. All right. Sounds good. <laughs> All right.